And we looked up the definition just to be sure. Uh, before the show, because today's National Burrito Day, so we're like, well, if you could only pick three things for your burrito, what would they be? Rich writes in, without beans, aren't these just tacos? <laughs> By the definition of burrito, no. Burrito is just a stuffed tortilla. Uh, a taco seems to be open-faced. Taco, to me, it's open-faced, yes. But let's keep in mind the theory on a good number of Mexican dishes are it's the same thing. Presented differently, right? Plus, taco. You got your choice of corn taco, flour taco. Then you can go soft corn taco or hard corn taco. Yep. Then you got the, the hard corn taco that stands up by itself. But anyway, we'll tally these up, and at the end of the show, give you the three most preferred burrito uh, filling burrito items uh, to fill your burrito on this National Burrito Day. A lot Getting of feedback. Hungry. A lot of feedback coming in on the Lions thing we were discussing earlier. And uh, there's sad news in Metro Detroit today that we'll get to at 1120. But let's get to some of this feedback. Hopefully, if you send it, we'll read yours. From Tim in Northville, give me Mel's steak. Keep building the foundation. So that was Team Todd or Team Mel. Dueling mock drafts, two rounders. Mel Kuyper had the Lions taking Tavon Bryan, the defense tackle for Florida at 20. And at 51, taking Billy Price, the guard center from Ohio State. Todd McShay, in his two-rounder, had Sony Michelle going to the Lions at 20, Arden Key, defensive end LSU, going to the Lions at 51. We wondered, and this feels like a, st- a sizzle versus steak. We're all in the Camp Todd. In fact, most of the feedback was in Camp Todd, but we wondered if there'd be people out there that actually like Mel's mock draft. Uh, I think the Lions are doing a soft tank for next year's draft. They know they aren't getting past Minnesota or Green Bay without high round picks. That is why they're setting, that's what they're setting up for. Soft tank. <laughs> the Lions have already given the white white flagged the NFC North and are playing for the future. I kind of doubt that. Oh, I, I don't think that's the case at all. I'm liking both. I'll take Mel's picks. Getting good trench pieces helps with the defense, helps with the offensive line. Fun debate. Uh, we're drafting an offensive lineman and a defensive lineman in the first two rounds. I know a lot of fans will be mad, but I'll be thrilled. Build from the trenches. That's from Dave at work. Uh, unless Rudock is potential trade bait, Castle will not be the backup. He's their version of an emergency goalie and will help in the film road and hold a clipboard. He hasn't been good or average in 10 years. He was the backup last year in Tennessee. Um, now, that doesn't mean he's good, but it also means somebody else saw him as a backup quarterback. Well, he's basically been a backup for the last several years. I mean, he he got the one year to start in New England when Brady got hurt, and he had a pretty good season there. Uh, Then he turned that into a lucrative contract with Kansas City, and he started the next two years. And then the following two years, he basically was a starter for half the season. I don't know if that's because of injury or because somebody else overtook him or, or what the case was, but... Half the half those games he started, so he hasn't been a regular starter in the league since 2010. All right, so this is breaking news today in Metro Detroit, and um, it comes from Jamie Edmonds. Was the first that I saw report this uh, from from uh, Channel Four WDIV, and. She tweeted out a picture of a sign at Hazel Park Raceway. An employee with tears in her eyes just put this sign up at Hazel Park Raceway. And the sign reads as following. After nearly 70 years, Hazel Park Raceway is closing effective April 5th, 2018. We want to express our heartfelt appreciation to our employees, visitors, supporters, and longstanding community partners. Now, there's a couple things about this. You know, I saw recently the Hazel Park had been approved for, I think it was 40 dates in 2018. So they were going to race on Fridays and Saturdays starting in May, early May. And it was going to be for 20 weeks. But the other thing I remember about Hazel Park is a few years ago, and correct me on these details, Gator, if you got them and right. I don't. But a few years ago, Hazel Park pushed really hard for basically a casino on site. Well, they've been they took a big leap of faith about more than a dozen years ago on being able to get a license for a casino and they had built a part of a structure there 
that was going to house the casino and and slot machines and and the whole bit. And from what I had been told of, from somebody there at the time, it was the lobbyists involved from the other from the big three casinos here in Detroit that that prevented that from happening, and it never was able to take form the way that they wanted it to. They never got it. And that hurt them big time because they invested tons of money into it. I mean, there was a giant structure there that they had to turn into something else, but it was intended for the uh, the casino part. Um, and every year it seemed like they, they kept lobbying locally here uh, to, to get it, to allow for it, but they got, you know, stomped on by the the bigger – the bigger money. I, I got to tell you, there's a few things about this from a, a perspective of someone who never went there. And I'll raise my hand and admit it. I've been to Northville Downs, uh, but I never went there. Well, here's the park was a little bit of a hike for you. Yes. But here's the thing. If they had a casino on site where you had casino coupled with racing, am I wrong in saying that would have been the destination? It would have been great. You could have gone there and done some for off. The gambler. Yeah. Off track betting and um, obviously betting on the horses that are there, and they wanted to the, if they could get more of the uh, the thoroughbreds going. And then the last couple of years, I think that they did have some thoroughbred racing there. So it 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 changed a little bit, but not enough. And it's disheartening here because I would guess maybe three of the last six years or seven years or so, I would go there for the uh, the Derby, watch the Derby from there, and enjoy the day at the track. That they had there. Hazel Park was a lot of fun. I I enjoyed going there, man. It was, it wasn't terribly expensive when you were there. The food and drinks were reasonably priced, and it was good entertainment. You know, and it was family entertainment. You can bring the kids out there and enjoy it too. Do Do you think the and like once again, I don't know, but do you think the building of the casino before getting it approved, making that investment was getting too far out over their skis, and it eventually cost them? I know. I, I think it was part of it, but I, I think overall, it just the the interest in in horse racing had, had diminished, and, and there's political reasons for it as well why it didn't work out. But I mean, it's uh, it was built on harness racing, and I don't know if, if harness racing was was enough to to really get people interested. They needed the thoroughbreds to get to get people to come in there, and it just they just weren't getting enough people to come to the turnstiles at all. Would a casino have helped it? Absolutely, I think. I think it, you're right. When you say it would, would have been the place to go, I think that yeah. would have been the destination for yeah. the gambler. Would have More been great. so than any of the downtown casinos. Mm -hmm. And I, It's too bad because I've love... been there when it's been packed. And when it's packed, it's exciting. You know, walking around a paddock and you see uh, thousands of people there. And, you know, the stands, it's fun to be up there. And it was a great time, a great, a great experience. But, unfortunately, those big nights were so few and far between that, it wasn't enough to survive. That's my guess. Uh, so let me give it the the outsider's view, too. Like somebody who says, oh, you only need to watch the last two minutes of an NBA game, mm -hmm. that whole thing. Isn't there suspicion that all those harness races are fixed? Well, there's <laughs> there's some of that. But that's why I said they got into thoroughbred racing, too. And, um, you know, that would be more attractive than the harness race. Look, maybe it's just not an area where this is going to be supported. I can't remember the name of the track they opened up out by uh, Metro Airport. Yeah, that lasted a short time. That I see every really time sure. I it was like one year. Yeah, I take off in a plane and you see it. You look down and you're like, oh, there's that track. And back in the day, they had DRC, but this wasn't. I know what you're talking. You're talking about something was within the last ten years. They had that track that was open. Like, and it was weird because they were only allowed to race like two days a week, and it was, it was like, like Tuesdays and Thursdays. Or it something was. Like that. It was weird. And I look. I'm. I'm not like. This doesn't hurt me personally, but I guess I'm saddened because it's another thing in Metro Detroit that's going away. Now, Northfield Downs is still open, right? I think so. Yeah, it, that, that's maybe good news for them. Well, and they were operating both of those tracks that would, would switch off. Like one was on for six months, the other one would come on for six months. They, so Northfield was basically over the winter time, uh, the fall and into the winter. Um, I don't know how this affects Northville or if it affects them at all. I imagine that there would be some effect on it. Here's what it does affect people out there. 2485399797. Your reaction to this news and and maybe you can provide some insight as to what happened as as to why I mean we've given a bunch of theories but this is sort of outside our scope in general, you know. No, but it it does suck because it was it was just another thing to go to and and have fun with and 
it was a massive property out there in Hazel Park, right off of 696, a, a massive property when you look at it. Um, so trying to think about the upkeep and all that and the overhead, it, it has to be really, really tough. Yeah, and what you went there for was, like you said, it was an like extremely cheap night to do something different. Yeah. You know, you didn't have to go crazy or anything. The slot, not getting slot machines really hurt Hazel Park. But I remember I'd be in Vegas, and they have all the races around. You could see Hazel Park Harness Racing. You could bet on it in Vegas. They'd have it on yeah. the TV screens up there. And it's just kind of cool that it was local. You go there in the summertime. My buddies would go every, you know, once or twice a month. Always ask me, come on up. You know, we're getting dollar dogs tonight. Place a couple $5 bets, you know, and just kind of enjoy yeah. the night. I remember as a kid, the first time I went to, we were in um, Lexington, Kentucky. And we went to, that's not Churchill. Churchill's in, in Louisville, right? But whatever it is in Lexington, we went and they had, you know, a similar facility. And I'm like, ah, horse racing. I had so much fun. I loved it. And now I'm a little disappointed in myself that I haven't taken my kids to something like that now that we see a local resource go away. But if I did go to anywhere, it would have been Northville Downs. But 248 539 Ticket text 97136. Carson Anderson. 97 the ticket. 97 won the ticket.